Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Things aren't going too good here at the moment. We are dry. So, two and a half months earlier than expected, we're going to open a tube. That is bloody spectacular. So things are bloody bad in East and South at the moment. Pretty sure the rest of South is not too far behind. Some places possibly even worse down the coast. Um, we don't know what we're gonna do for winter. Well, let's have a quick wee look at these Swedes here and see what's going on here first. So these are looking amazingly good considering they've had, crikey, these might have had 150 mils of rain on them. Maybe a little bit more since planting. Um, leaves are amazingly still real supple. As you can see out there, there's a lot of butterflies around. We're waiting on the helicopter to come. It's supposed to be yesterday. Hopefully the next few days he'll be here. We've sort of held off on the bugs. There's a few aphids in here and there are butterflies. The big problem is that they're just not getting enough water. Simple as that. I don't know how they've done as well as they have. Um, but there's also... This other issue which I've gone over in the past called powdery mildew, or downy mildew. I think we get both of them. So if we have a look on the leaf here, we can see these wee spots. Here's in the sunshine. And you sort of see those wee grey spots. They're not too bad on the back, there's a wee bit up there, but there's some wee aphids. Um, how are we looking on the stems? We're not looking too bad. See that black stuff there showing up? That's what we don't want. Yeah. Bit of rot in, where are we? Where's the camera? Bit of rot in that bulb, that's the last thing we want to see. These bulbs are a reasonable size. These are the 15 inch, so they should be a bit smaller. I'm hoping we can still get 15 tonne of dry matter out of these. Um, the problem we're facing at the moment is that they could very soon start going backwards, and that is a really scary prospect. So yeah, we're resorting to feeding up baleage in March. This is terrifying. We don't open baleage until, sometimes the calves are gone on crop start of May, very unusually, but sometimes it does happen. Um, traditionally, first of June, we'll crack a tube open and we'll go from there. We've got a fair bit extra up our sleeves this year, which is bloody lucky, because if we didn't, I don't know what we'd be doing. I've only got one mob I'm feeding baleage out to, but I am going to feed them two bales today. They're going to get a shift. If they've eaten it all tomorrow, then I'm going to shift tomorrow. If they haven't, it'll be the next day and they're not getting shifted on to much. We'll have a look when we're up there. Um, I've only got one mob that I'm feeding out to. The other mobs I'm still trying to look after a wee bit better. We've got the ewe lambs, obviously, we want to look after. Works lambs, we want them gone. But COVID sort of put a handbrake on that. Yeah, the turdies, we don't want to push turdies too hard. They are your young breeding stock. And if you bugger them now, they're bugger for life. And we've still got some... We'll call them BUs, they're not really lighter anymore, you've seen them in previous videos. Um, but if we put pressure on them, they're going to go backwards. So there's only really the big mob of ewes, which is 900 and 960, 950 odd, maybe a handful less than that mob now. Um, we're going to feed out to them, because they're the ones I think can handle the pressure for a wee while. We're still hoping we get some bloody rain, 
still haven't got any nitrogen on because we haven't had any rain. Um, yeah, things are getting bloody scary. Right, we'll see how good I am at doing this from last year. Been a wee while. I love the way these squares fit out off this thing. That was a wee bit untidy to start with, but uh, yeah, I will put the camera down for a minute and I'll get these bales fed out and then we'll have another talk. So, here we are in the use, and this is what they've got. It ain't pretty. I mean, there's still greenery there, and there is still a little bit of feed volume there, but it's not much, but it's pretty bloody rough. Um, that's our boundary down there, just, just there. So yeah, the girls are sort of looking at me funny going, what are you doing? Why are you feeding us our baleage at the moment? As you can see, that row down there's got a fair few at it. They're coming here and they are eating it, but I fed out a bale two days ago. They're just not used to it yet. So, yeah. I know you might be looking at us going, crikey, you've still got a heap of green feed around, look, that paddock back there. That one down there with that other mobile. But this is the concern we have here is that we have five months of the year where we basically grow well we've definitely got five months of the year where we grow less than we need three months where we just sort of work on basically zero and the two months either side of that or one month either side of that where we work on very very little growth um, certainly not as much as we need so we're going to grow a big bulk of grass and obviously the swedes just over uh, where are we you can just see a wee bit of the paddock there somewhere um, to get through because we don't want to we do not want to have to put our sheep on a weight loss diet, which is basically what's looking like it's going to be happening this year. But uh, it is what it is. It's out of everyone else's control, out of our control. There's very little, well, there's nothing we can do. We've got options. Uh, like I said, we've got plenty of baleage. Um, that said, if we start feeding it out now, we've, we've got enough baleage. I wouldn't say we've got a surplus. I was sort of worried that I can afford to lose 65 bales of what we've got in the autumn, which is basically going to be these girls at two bales every second day, somewhere around about there. We might get rain in time, we might grow enough grass to get through. Sort of looking at options for grain. I hate the idea of feeding grain out, but as it needs to an end, um, yeah, we'll sort of maybe thinking about buying a silo if we need to and putting, I don't know, get a four, five, six, eight ton silo or something. Nothing too big. A crusher, buy some barley in it, it's a stupidly high price this year too. And that's not the grain farmer's fault. They deserve to have a good year once every now and again. But uh, yeah, from our point of view, it doesn't help. It's sort of really, we're out of options. <laughs> we want to destock and we can't. If we could destock, we'd be all right. I wouldn't say it would be fine, but we'll be all right. But yeah, we certainly uh, don't have the option to do that at the moment either. The wee hustle chain, this is a great wee machine though. I do like the way it feeds these square bales out. I hate round bales and I've never got, got my head around them. All these piles are all loose and fluffed up and it's really great. They sort of tear the slabs off in half horizontally and fluff them all up real nicely so you don't get a lot of wastage. Whereas the old round bales I've just I've always struggled to feed out, they always, yeah. On these chainless feeders they sort of, um, the type of bailage we're making the rounds is often short notice, green juicy stuff and they don't unroll. They tend to just rip the centers out of them. Which is quite frustrating. So you get these big balls of grass come out and they're still quite tight, they haven't been teased off. And then you get the big circle in the middle that just goes out in one big clump and yeah, wastage. Not a fan of wastage right now, that's for sure. I did forget to mention too, that paddock there, which doesn't have a whole lot on it either, that's where this mob be going to next. So this paddock here, 
is the one that in the last video or the one before I think it was the last one we split her in half with a brake fence so these ewes are over here on some uh, pretty good feed but we've run into a bit of a headache here so as you can see on the fence line there is a very stark contrast to quality and quantity either side of the fence this is quite nice over here we've still got a few paddocks to this we've got that one way up on the hill two deuce are way over there we'll get out there in a minute and have a wee look um, these work slams over here it's nice and green but there's not a lot of feed over here calves and everything but we have run into a wee hiccup and that is that I really wanted it to rain we've got no water on this side of the paddock so I've had to leave the fence open which means it will still have a benefit but this side of the paddock that I was wanting to leave shut up and let grow yeah I've had to leave that fence open so the sheep can walk back and forth for water because the only water in this paddock is way down in that corner down there so yeah we have got grand plans to put a water scam in it's going to be happening this winter fingers crossed going to do a fair bit of it ourselves um, trying to do all of it ourselves actually there's some guys that are going to supply us the pipe we're sort of drawing up a bit of a design at the moment just to work out what size pipes we need I know where I want to put the bloody thing but um, they come and had a look and said yep no that'll all work and they're just going to tell me or give me a guide I'm not necessarily going to do what they say they tell me to put two inch pipe everywhere I won't be doing that but um, that's becoming increasingly important now as we're splitting paddocks up we've got paddocks that haven't got natural water in them and we need to get troughs in those paddocks and we've got no way to do that without putting in a whole scheme basically so yeah it will be happening this winter or hopefully later on in the autumn at the moment even if we had the pipe the ground is just far too hard we'd have to get a a D8 or something in to get the pipes down two feet and that's not happening we've got my own gear to do it during winter middle of winter to do the steep stuff will be far too wet won't get enough grip but there will be a fine point there of hopefully four to six weeks if we get rain we will be able to make that happen 